Okay, sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Xiang Gao. I'm postdoc from uh, Tel Aviv University. It's my great honor to be here today. And uh, the topic for my talk is the frictional properties of uh, graphene green boundaries. And in this talk, I will mainly uh, discuss uh, the dynamics of dislocations, and I will uh, slightly uh, talk about uh, the effect of more superstructures. So super is uh, roughly speaking, uh, describes the extremely low uh, frictional state. And uh, uh, due to the super uh, behavior, uh, it provides a broad range of uh, applications uh, at different length scales. And uh, in many of these applications, it will involve, uh, it will involve the situation that uh, uh, of dry lubrication between two solid surfaces. In such uh, condition, uh, superlubricity may be realized by uh, uh, properly uh, using, uh, utilizing uh, the structural uh, properties and uh, which give rise to the concept of uh, structural superlubricity. And uh, uh, in specific structural superlubricity, as we know, uh, this, uh, uh, refers to the effective cancellation of lateral forces uh, due to the lattice mismatch or lattice uh, misorientation uh, between two flat and rigid uh, crystal surfaces. And uh, these requirements are relatively easily uh, satisfied by 2D uh, layered materials. Therefore, we see uh, two-dimensional materials have been widely studied for structural superlubricity in recent years. And uh, since this uh, concept uh, was uh, proposed, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have seen that the uh, uh, experiment has demonstrated a structural superlubricity uh, using a nanoscale, microscale, uh, homo junctions, and later by heterojunctions or under multi contacts uh, to realize the so called robust superlubricity. And, uh, the, these promising results motivate us to uh, further scale up structural superlubricity toward the macro scale. Uh, however, in, in previous uh, studies, uh, structural superlubricity uh, is mainly demonstrated uh, by single crystalline uh, samples. And uh, as we know at present, it is still very challenging to prepare uh, large sized uh, high quality single crystal samples even under light conditions. Uh, so in this regard, it is more practical to consider uh, polycrystalline two-dimensional materials, which are uh, more feasible to achieve large amount for uh, real applications. And among the various uh, polycrystalline two-dimensional materials, um, polycrystalline graphene uh, can be a good candidate. So what is uh, the polycrystalline sample? And uh, so, so uh, Let's take an example uh, of uh, this polycrystalline graphene. It uh, contains uh, uh, randomly oriented greens and uh, separated by green boundaries. So uh, although we know that the, the randomness in orientation uh, of the greens may uh, facilitate the incommensurability of the interface, but the green boundaries, on the other hand, may uh, produce additional energy dissipation that may impact Superlubricity. So, uh, to uh, understand the frictional properties of uh, green boundary, uh, we first uh, uh, it's, it's better to understand the, the structure of green boundaries. So, here I show you uh, uh, the structure of a single green boundary, and we can see it consists of a series of uh, uh, dislocations, colored, uh, showing by this uh, sign colored. Uh, at, uh, spheres, and uh, if we further zoom in, uh, we see the most common uh, uh, dislocations in polycrystalline graphene, which is the uh, heptagon pentagon pair dislocation. And uh, one uh, important feature of uh, these dislocations is that they introduce a lattice string to the uh, uh, to uh, lateral string to the lattice and which may cause uh, the distortion in topography. And we note uh, the topography properties 
may uh, be critical to the friction, frictional behaviors we are interested in. So uh, this uh, image shows you uh, the experimental measured uh, particle crystalline graphene sample, and it consists of a few uh, green boundaries. And interestingly, we see that the top, top graph of, uh, due to the uh, introduced stream by the dislocations, the topograph is, uh, of the green boundaries are quite uh, uh, non-trivial. It can vary from uh, highly uh, corrugated buckled structure to nearly flat uh, configuration. And uh, to systematically uh, study the uh, topographic e uh, properties of uh, green boundaries, we, per we perform IMD simulations. And, uh, and uh, we find that for small misfit angle between the greens, uh, the green boundaries uh, is, uh, are usually uh, cor uh, are corrugated. And uh, for large misfit angle, uh, the green boundaries are also usually uh, corrugated. But uh, uh, at, at certain uh, misfit angles, we do observe uh, nearly flat uh, green boundaries. So here, uh, I show you the summarized results for uh, the bump height and uh, this uh, uh, bump density as a function of a misfit angle. So we see that as the misfit angle increases, the corrugation height uh, decreases, and while for the bump density, it first linearly increases and then uh, drops uh, due to the connection of uh, the neighboring dislocations. And in the middle region of large misfit angle, we do observe a few flat green boundary cases and uh, the results are symmetric with respect to 30 degree. And uh, then we uh, perform simulations to study the frictional behavior of uh, these individual uh, protrusions. And here I show you an example uh, uh, the, of the case uh, where a flake sliding over a single protrusion. And uh, so we can see as the flake approaches this uh, uh, upward protrusion, blue color means a high, higher corrugation. It pressed down this uh, uh, protrusion uh, and uh, to the other side. And uh, after this flake leaves this uh, uh, region, this uh, protrusion will buckle back. And uh, this kind of uh, buckling uh, is somewhat similar, uh, like the uh, step through buckling of an arch, arched beam at the micro scale. And uh, the buckling, of course, will generate a, a kinetic energy pulse and enhance the energy dissipation. So after knowing uh, the frictional behaviors of these individual uh, protrusions, then we consider in practical applications, a more common scenario is that uh, these uh, polycrystal materials will understand, will under uh, persistent shear and working at uh, different load and temperature conditions. And uh, to investigate the frictional behaviors of green boundaries under these uh, conditions, we built a fully periodic uh, simulation system. And uh, it consists of uh, uh, a uh, three layer crystalline graphene slider atop one layer polycrystalline graphene, and uh, which is supported by another two pristine graphene layer. And this uh, picture shows you the set view of the system. And uh, for the uh, polycrystalline layer, it contains two uh, periodic green boundary, and uh, the misfit angle is eight degree. After uh, relaxation, we can see a series uh, upward, downward protrusions. The blue color here is the same. It's an upward protrusion, and the red color is a downward protrusion. And uh, now I would like to talk about the main results of uh, our uh, simulation results for the friction. And the first, for load dependence, uh, at zero temperature, we find that the dependence is uh, uh, non-monotonic uh, uh, dependence on normal load. It first increases uh, and reaches a maximum, and then it uh, gradually drops uh, 
as we increase the temperature, we see the peak position gradually shift toward a lower normal load regime, and uh, at certain temperature, it becomes uh, uh, monotonically decreased. And uh, if we further increase temperature, the entire curve will shift down a little bit. And for the temper temperature dependence of friction, we see somewhat similar behavior as we uh, increase uh, external normal load, uh, the peak position changes to lower temperature and uh, finally become a uh, monotonically decreasing like uh, behavior. And uh, so also uh, for uh, the load dependence, we see that uh, uh, there is a regime uh, the, that friction goes down with normal load. This can we can this is uh, uh, can be defined as a regime with uh, negative friction coefficients and uh, provides a way to uh, surprise energy dissipation uh, for large scale sized system. And uh, then to understand the frictional behaviors, we analyze the energy dissipation uh, properties at zero temperature without some more uh, fluctuation. And uh, so first, uh, the dissipation uh, uh, power uh, as a function of normal load shows us that the main uh, dissipation comes from the out-of-plane out uh, direction. And uh, if we uh, check the energy dissipation distribution, we find uh, the high uh, energy dissipation size are located uh, near certain dislocations. And uh, so from this uh, results, we can uh, say that the energy dissipation are mainly due to the out-of-plane motions uh, of the items at uh, certain dislocations. And if we track the trajectory uh, of these uh, uh, dislocations in the vertical direction, we find that uh, those uh, dislocations undergo uh, dynamic buckling between upward protrusion state with, uh, and the downward protrusion state. And uh, uh, by increasing uh, the normal load, we find it has two uh, opposite effects. First, it can promote more uh, dislocations to buckle during sliding, while it has surprised the uh, magnitude of buckling, uh, which uh, uh, will uh, reduce the energy uh, dissipation per buckling event. So, and uh, I, under high normal load, we see that the dislocation is under smooth like motion and uh, it's, uh, the energy dissipation is low. So, here we can explain that uh, the non monotonic dependence of uh, friction and, uh, on load at zero temperature is due to the competitive. Uh, comp uh, interplay between the incre uh, increased fraction of uh, buckling dislocations with the reduction in each buckling event uh, as the normal load is increased. And uh, so to further quantitatively uh, uh, describe the energetic behavior of the two uh, upward and downward state, we extract the free energy profiles from equilibrium simulation. And uh, here, uh, this uh, plot shows you uh, the free energy profile for a given uh, dislocation, and we can see a clear transition energy barrier between the two states. And uh, we find that uh, the average transition energy barrier goes down with normal load, and it positively correlates with uh, the protrusion uh, correlation. And uh, with these uh, results, we can also understand roughly or qualitatively explain the buckling at zero temperature. Uh, at zero temperature, uh, the, energy, uh, the transition energy barrier uh, actually varies with uh, the sliding projection. And uh, once this uh, transition energy barrier goes to zero, uh, buckling uh, occurs. And uh, with further sliding, if the transition energy barrier uh, becomes zero again, and uh, it will buckle back. And uh, with temperature, the buckling can occur at earlier projection. So, and based on these results, we uh, develop a two-state phenomenological model. And in this model, the buckling probability, probability is related to the uh, transition energy barrier. 
and uh, sorry. And here I show you, uh, sorry, here I show you the comparison of our MD simulation results with uh, this model prediction, and uh, you can see the model can well capture the load dependence and the temporal dependence of friction. And uh, how many minutes do I? Have? Okay, and uh, here I show you uh, two typical simulation movies. One is, uh, sorry. One is at zero temperature and, uh, sorry, what happened? And the one is at a finite temperature and you can see uh, the thermal activation can facilitate the di dynamic buckling of these dislocations. And in the last part, I would like to briefly introduce another uh, very important effect at two-dimensional interface, which is the Moray su superstructures. Moray superstructures uh, forms when uh, also due, uh, due to the lattice mismatch or lattice misorientation. And uh, to study this effect, we, did, we built similar MD simulation system will replace the uh, graphing slider with a hexagonal, hexagonal boron nitride. And uh, here you can see the relaxed uh, structure, uh, uh, more superstructure on this uh, polycrystalline layer. And uh, because one uh, green in the polycrystalline uh, graphene is aligned with uh, HBN, so we can see very large scale uh, more superstructure on one, gr uh, on one green. And uh, so this uh, uh, plot shows you our uh, main similar result of friction as a function of normal load at zero temperature and uh, uh, high tem uh, at, at room temperature. And uh, compared to the results uh, of uh, Homo junction in Homo junction, we find that uh, they show similar uh, uh, monotonic to mo uh, mon monotonic decrease uh, change in the lower low normal load regime. While in the high normal load regime, you can see a uh, uh, sharp uh, different, uh, difference. And in the heterojunction, the friction dramatically increases. And here, there is uh, another uh, mechanism occurs. And uh, so, which uh, we find is due to the, uh, sorry, I want to show maybe this uh, movie for the last. Uh, the high energy dissipation at the uh, High normal load we find is due to uh, some stick slip kind of uh, behavior uh, for the more superstructures at the high normal loads. Okay, so I will. So here are the conclusions. I will. I will stop here, and uh, I would like to take your questions. Thank you very much. Questions. Uh, just one uh, one clarification. So, so regarding your methods, you didn't say very much about this. Did I understand correctly that you're sliding a rigid flake over your grain boundaries? Uh, essentially? In our simulation, only the, the the top layer is rigid. We have a six layer system. The top layer is rigid, uh, moving with a constant velocity in the sliding direction, while the bottom layer is uh, also r rigid, uh, fixed at its uh, initial position. Other layers are flexible. Okay, and then, and then another question follow up um, on the grain boundaries. So the grain boundaries in graphene, I believe, are not perfectly terminated. So there will be dangling bonds. Uh, ac actually, uh, yes, but uh, but actually, uh, this system for this system, uh, because we are considering the dislocation uh, relatively far away from the edges, so the edge should not have uh, too much effect on the buckling behavior of the dislocation. No, no, I'm not talking about the actual, but this is a grain boundary in the middle, right, where you have these protrusions. Hmm? This is a, uh, where the protrusions are because there's a grain boundary, right? Yes, yes. Even the grain boundary will have unsaturated atoms. It will have dangling bonds, so it may be chemically reactive. So my question is, what influence that would have on friction? I would expect that the friction should go up if you slide over it because you're forming covalent bonds or the system tries to form a covalent because bond. Because I think uh, here, uh, each uh, uh, items also also have uh, three neighbors, so it's saturated, like uh, it will not form 
easily form bond with uh, other atoms in other layers. Just to follow up on that, I think at, at least for some grain boundaries in graphene or materials like this, you can get just rehybridization of the carbon. So there's some sp3 bonds that show up, not just sp2. So they may not be dangling unsaturated bonds, but the change in hybridization, and that makes it go out of plane. But that said, I would also expect, even with that, just chemically it's still distinct, and you may get a friction interaction from that, an enhancement of friction. Uh, OK. So you mean uh, there may be uh, some chemical reaction with uh, up? Yeah, I think, I think there's, those are high energy sites. And uh, even, even if there were no topography and flexibility from the buckling, just, you know, it's like having a higher energy local site ought to lead to some kind of, you know, pinning interaction, uh, an enhanced barrier to sliding over it. So, so it's not, I think that's partially, partially what Lars was getting at is, is that factored in. Okay. So. So, so I ha I have a question. When um, one graphene surface moves moves uh, over the other surface s surface, there is also a torque which is um, produced. So maybe does does your uh, for example dependence of dissipation on, uh, on normal force comes from ability to accom accommodate this, uh, this, this, this movement. Because, uh, be because uh, um, um, uh, this superlobric incommensurate state has low friction, but uh, it is high in energy. So, so surface would like to, 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 to get aligned. And uh, these uh, defects which are uh, there, they uh, actually accommodate uh, this, uh, this uh, rotation. And when you increase the pressure, they can, uh, they can move less. And this, that could be a mechanism which, which is just accommodated by existence of this uh, grain boundary. So did you think about that? Did you analyze that, these rotations and such uh, stuff? OK, so first, uh, in our simulation, uh, the top layer, uh, so there is no uh, rotation in the top driving layer. and. Uh, Second, actually, we find the, uh, uh, sorry. So here, uh, we analyzed the energy dissipation and uh, we actually find the, the dissipation power mainly comes from the out of plane motion because uh, during each buckling uh, process, the, the, the instantaneous velocity is uh, quite high and this will generate the uh, kinetic energy pulses and uh, uh, in, uh, do, uh, cause, uh, contribute to the main uh, energy dissipation. And uh, without this, uh, uh, this uh, buckling events, uh, the energy dissipation is quite low and uh, comparable to the resistance interface. I guess the question was, did you allow for rotation of the flake? Uh, no. Oh, so you, you, you remain? At the bottom layer, we all have sli a small rotation but uh, the top layer is not. Overall, the rotation is very small. Uh, I want to ask if your uh, dislocation is mobile or is uh, fixed? Uh, it's uh, very uh, stable. Even under a uh, uh, thousand uh, Kelvin, dislocations will not uh, diffuse or dislo displace. Uh, OK, uh, thank you. Question myself. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, you said in the beginning that the friction uh, mm -hmm. will apply the um, uh, of the number of uh, buckling. How does that happen? Uh, because uh, uh, this uh, can be understood from uh, this energy profile. So for some dislocations, if for uh, uh, the energy of transition energy barrier is very high. During sli sliding, it will stay in this state. It cannot buckle. So as we increase the normal load, this will reduce the barrier, and uh, it can buckle during sliding. During well, if you have a very large slide, say. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. 
Okay, um, sorry, I missed the beginning of your talk. Um, I also missed your paper, Xi'an. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, but I wonder, you talked about this location. You have these locations to which you can... ...plastic, instability... Uh, so it's uh, it's real dislocations, and uh, here uh, it's like uh, the the density of uh, this uh, pentagon hypertagon pair dislocations will increase with uh, uh, misfit angle. Thank, uh, thank you. Now we have Enrico. Now 